Hi, and welcome to today's presentation where we have the pleasure to present Gumspace. To help us through today uh, and answer question, we are joined by CEO Carsten Dragman. Today's topic, the Q1 release, uh, fresh from the press this morning, uh, and maybe what I read more about it is that you are giving a sneak peek, uh, Carsten, on new, new viewpoints where you have to move, and that has also changed the way you want to guide the market uh, on cash flow instead of maybe the operations. So. So very interesting to hear more about that. As always, ask questions in the box down below. Do it in English, do it in Danish. And in Danish, I will try and translate to the best of my ability. But this presentation will happen in English. But for now, Carsten, I think I will leave the word over to you. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, welcome, everybody. Pleasure to be here uh, now for the second time with, um, with uh, AC Anderson Capital. Uh, very pleased to talk about uh, well our Q1 results, but more more interested in talking about the future actually. Uh, the topic, uh, the overall headline for this is profitability and cash. I uh, promised uh, early when I started to say uh, do more communication, clarity, etc. So this is what I'll be be doing. And uh, clarity is it's all about profitability and cash uh, going forward, at least for a period of time. The content of the presentation, I'll of course walk you through a couple of the highlights for the Q1 uh, uh, that you've already uh, read. Um, a reminder about the uh, GUM space and what we're doing and some of the, the, the strategies that we're having and then my focus going forward. Let's start with the Q1. First of all, a couple of highlights. Uh, we have executed the cost saving that was announced in, in January. So uh, all, uh, let's say, all, all employees that we decided to let go has been uh, informed so that this, in effect, will see the impact towards the uh, second half of the year. We still estimate a saving about 30 million in total for, for 2023 in terms of cash. Uh, we had a discontinuation of a program with, with ESA that we agreed it didn't make sense to, to continue. That had a contract value of about 20 million, which is... Um, but some some of it was uh, was uh, assumed uh, this year, but but anyway, we decided that it wasn't it wasn't interesting continuing and not for ESA either. So so we have stopped that. Uh, on the business development side, uh, you have seen uh, we signed an, a memorandum of understanding with SAIC in the US um, for CubeSats, MicroSats, SmallSat systems, etc. So basically, they're going to be uh, the intention is uh, I should say that they would be a system integration partner in in the US. Uh, and, and this is great to have a big, big network uh, in, in the U.S. market. Uh, in terms of cash, in March, we got the first disbursement from uh, the European Investment Bank, uh, an agreement that has been announced last year, and we took 57 million uh, in cash, and that uh, hit our books in, in March, so in the first quarter. When you read the numbers, I should highlight to you that we also have, of course, cash coming from the, the capital uh, of the rights issue. It's about 53 or well, about uh, 47 million that's coming into uh, to come space. Uh, that money we have received in May. So it will be second quarter. Just so if you're confused about where is that money, it's coming in the second quarter. Uh, but uh, but this is a summary. So uh, altogether, about 100 million in, in capital has come in in the first two quarters. A uh, quick look at the, the key figures. Order intake is more or less aligned with uh, first quarter last year, so we're keeping keeping a pace uh, there. Uh, net sales also uh, more or less aligned with the first quarter. A bit harder to compare, of course, with the, with the later quarters of 2022, since uh, there was a big impact on um, on uh, the uh, uh, from, from the Indra deal uh, that that you heard about. Operating profits uh, below zero, minus uh, about 15, 18 million. Uh, so uh, EBIT is, is, is still below zero. Uh, of course, something we need to, to work on. Uh, not as bad as the previous quarters, but again, there was a lot of uh, reversals and impacts on that. Uh, employees, as mentioned, we have executed the plan that we have announced, and the number of employees is uh, gradually reducing. I expect it's going to go down to about 150, 160 towards the end of the year in, in total. That is with the plans that we have uh, currently. Now, <clears throat> what Michael already hinted to, uh, I want to change the guidance to the market uh, to uh, free cash flow. What we're doing, and I'll dive into more details later, but just as a summary, 
uh, I'm taking the organization and the company through a transformation where we'll focus on free cash flow as our key parameter that we're measuring ourselves against. Uh, we have profitability in everything we do as a guidance, and free cash flow is basically what we are, are focused on. You can see on a graph to the right hand side that uh, the free cash flow from the from the previous quarter. So we have been burning between 40 to 60, 65 million in average the last quarters. It's quite similar to what it has been if you go uh, a further year back. First quarter, we also burned a bit more than, than 40 million. <clears throat> uh, and in that 40 million, we haven't seen the impact of the, of the cost savings done. So that's really my, my guidance to the market. Uh, our objective is to hit that situation, uh, free cash flow positive, no later than second half of 2024. Uh, that is uh, our commitment towards the market. It's also our internal commitment. So everything we do right now in a transformation is focused on how do we bring ourselves from the current situation, i.e. minus 40 million per quarter, into a situation where we are at least break even uh, quarter by quarter. And, and, and Carsten, if we can talk a little bit about uh, you know the objective, if you want uh, to shareholder, then cash flow is the ultimate. That 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 we can agree on. Yeah. But it, are you are you seeing less visibility on 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 the top line and or the even margin or or, or, or it, 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 the reason for choosing this as the sole uh, target? Uh, if you can comment a little bit, uh, like comment a little bit on, on, yeah. on, on why this has been chosen, even if. Of course, we agree the ultimate for shareholders <laughs> is cash flow. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Michael. I I, I can. It's it, you know it's a simple philosophy of what you measure is what you get. And uh, since I'm now doing, I've started making business decisions based on free cash flow and profitability. We are realigning the organization to work and think like that. Then for me to report on revenue and EBIT, uh, at least for a period of time. I'm not saying we're not going back to that. Uh, does make sense. So I'm, I'm a very, very strong opinion. If this is what we do as the organization, organization, this is what we should report on. Otherwise, I'm reporting to the market or, or giving guidance to the market on something that is actually not my priority. My yeah. priority is free cash flow. Yes, yes. Um, so, so that's the uh, that's the thing. I, I can give a, a little anecdote as a as American TV show called um, I Love Lucy. Uh, I think few Danes know it, but there's an old episode where Lucy's husband comes home and she's on the floor in the living room uh, and the husband says, what are you doing? I'm looking for my earrings. Okay, that's bad. Where did you lose them? In the bedroom. Okay, but why are you in the living room? Well, the light is better in here. So it's it's sort of the same thing. If I'm focused on cash flow, why are we reporting on, on guidance on, on revenue? Of course, we will be what we want revenue and, and earnings and all of that. That's clear. But this, this is a key reason for the change. Perfect. Um, I also uh, give some guidance here on um, uh, what about cash? Can you do this, Carsten? Can you do this, GAM space? Well, we have plans in place. So I understand the stepping stones we need to go through. Of course, the things that need to, we need to be successful in. Uh, we need to uh, be able to turn our current uh, contract portfolio to be a bit more profitable than it is today. We're implementing a transformation. We're looking at different uh, alternative financing options, but altogether, we believe we can do this without raising further capital from the market. And to me, I think that is that is uh, that is probably the message that uh, that uh, that you should be looking for. Uh, so this is the objective, um, and uh, we have a plan for how to execute that. Okay, there are ten bullets, and it all needs to succeed. That's fine, but we are working and we are managing it, and we know if you manage that, this is possible. Hey, and come uh, second half 2024, we are uh, a free cash flow positive means money in, less money out. Doesn't matter what it's used for is positive. Yeah. We have a different situation and then we can start visit revisiting how we potentially can accelerate growth from there. Perfect. Okay. I'll get back to that uh, a little later. So let's do a quick, uh, quick reminder of, uh, of uh, gum space. So um, <clears throat> lots of experience, world class. I've said that before. We have a lot of... Uh, Flight heritage, as it's called. If you look at the market distribution here, uh, Europe uh, 77, Asia 6%, USA 7, rest of the world 10. And I put a little green circle around the, 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 the US market, so we'll get back to that. So there's a key point here. We have a relatively low percentage of our revenue coming from there, and there's opportunity. Our core competences, so we divide it into three uh, areas of the value chain. There is subsystems and products, so parts of the satellite. There are so-called payloads. These are the electronics that does something, take a picture, has an, an antenna, radio frequency, 
uh, something installed. Uh, they're the platforms that are the actual satellites that are flying, which include subsystems and payloads. And then in the end, you need to manage it. It can't just fly by itself. You have to talk to the satellite. Uh, so we, we are sort of present in all of these, uh, but I want to highlight the products very much. And I'm going to come back and talk about uh, the focus on products. One standard platform, yes, this is what we're driving towards, uh, or a few uh, platforms, many applications. Uh, I like to introduce uh, the words use cases, applications. This is what you really use the satellite for. I've also said before, it's not so interesting you're sending off a satellite. We can do that, and it's up and flying. But it's actually what's interesting, what can it do? And what value does it have to the end user, to the customer? What can you do with a signal intelligence? This is a monitoring of radio signals, for example, driving fishing boats, as we've used an example. So what can it be used for? <clears throat> and it's something we need to focus more and understand more of what are the use cases and applications. And then we need to uh, drive ourselves towards what we're really good at and where we see a market, rather than just trying to do everything that's uh, out there. A uh, reminder for a strategy that was published uh, some time back. Uh, I think this is a very uh, uh, spot on uh, telling. Uh, so the vision for, for the future, there's many, few, many, many different uh, products, standard products and product segments, subsystems, bits and pieces that goes in. A few platforms, platforms meaning the actual satellite, a few platforms, and then many, many applications that you can add to that. So it's a many, few, many that we are focusing uh, on here. And this is, this is how we see the world. So we will have a good range of products and there's going to be a big need. It doesn't have to be just for our platforms. We are actually selling today to other platforms. We are selling even to our competitors are buying some of our products. Um, or we are selling to um, companies that are starting to develop a space strategy. They want to build uh, these uh, platforms. They're going to buy components for our, from us. Uh, we will also have some platforms ourselves. And like I said, we will very much focus on why the application. There are lots of applications. What are the ones that we could perhaps be strongest? Signal intelligence is, is one uh, example. OK, so this was a recap, a summary of, of our strategy and, and vision. And based on that, I'd like to um, take you to, the, to the, my focus areas that I've set for the, for the organization and our strategic uh, approach here. So first of all, a recap of current state. Remember, technology and people check, growing market check, global brand check, customer evolution, meaning are there more and more customers coming with more use cases? Yes, check. Right-hand side, uh, growth. Yeah, OK, fine, we are there. Profitability, eh, not so much. OK, this is what we're focusing on now. We have not made money for long enough. We need to start making money. But the, the, we take a lot of the boxes. We are in the right place to do this. The brand is there, the upper right-hand corner, like I've said before. We are known out there. We are mentioned as in, 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 in reports that Gumspace is first in, in line of these companies are doing nanosatellites. So everything is fine there. What's not so fine is, is, is how we leverage all our knowledge and how we make money on it. So what are we going to focus on? First of all, we'll focus more on repeatable business models matching our strengths. So we need to start repeating more of what we're doing instead of starting over again and again. It's normal that when you start off as a technology company that there's always something new. You have new ESA projects. You start new customer projects. Everything is new. And you, you're trying to figure it out because it's new technology. It's new space. Nobody has done it before. That's all fine. But now we need to go into where we have a bit more repeatability. Repeatability gives us uh, less risk, faster time to market a good chance of making a decent margin because we're getting better at doing it and our, our let's say our ability to execute and at a lower cost beats the, the potential price erosion in the market. So more repeatable business uh, is what we're using for guiding us. Strengthening the product business, more focus on product business. I'll get back to that because it deserves a, a, few, much, a few more words. Uh, increased focus on market needs and use cases. Like I said, we will focus more on understanding what is this used for. We already know how to build a satellite. We've done it many times. We need to start uh, focusing on what is it really used for and what's the what, what could be the, the market we can play in. And the last one is create leverage for our business. Leverage means more partnering. So we are um, we don't have to do everything ourselves. Uh, we can partner in uh, 
uh, in a go-to-market situation, SAIC is an example, but there are other examples where we can partner. We should focus on that. We will also partner much more on a technology level. We don't have to develop everything ourselves. It's, it's a good technology engineering company. You always try to do everything yourself. We're going to start focusing on what are the three, four, five areas that we are really good at. We'll get even better on that. And then there are other areas where we say, Matt, let's, uh, let's take that from some somewhere else. But we'll focus on that everything is playing together. So when customers come to us, they will experience, have an experience of, yeah, but you know, it's got to come space feel. It's working together. It's high quality. Yep. We're okay. We'll buy, we'll buy from Bomb Space. And Carsten, uh, looking at this, uh, number one and number three, for me, is is interconnected or almost the same, isn't it? Or, or how should I understand this uh, repeatable <clears throat> yeah. business uh, to your strengths? And I guess, uh, is it something like saying uh, less scientific, more uh, more to the industrial side where there's more repeatable business and, and <laughs> on market needs and use cases? I guess if you find an industry you're very good at, then you might be the chosen partner there and it's more repeatable. So so yeah. just to clarify it a little bit, uh, what the difference is between those two. No, you're right. They're playing off the same uh, same idea. So more repeatable business models is also referring to, let's take the signal intelligence monitoring right now, fishing boats. If every time we take a new project in, it's something different, uh, a different mission, it's always new for us. So yes, we want to take, okay, we're good at this. Instead of just listening and say, hey, where, where is a new opportunity, RFQ, as it's called, request for quotation from the market, we're going to go say, who needs this signal intelligence? What are the markets? Mm -hmm. uh, what are the, the nations that are interested in that? And we're going to go search for that instead. So you're spot on. Yes, it's part of the same story, but perhaps uh, just more explicit. So so it, it's more when, when, when you, ha you have strength somewhere, you are turning the sales process around, you're going out looking instead of uh, waiting for someone to come yeah, with an interesting correct. use case. Correct, you. correct. Yeah, that makes it's, sense. it's also referring a bit to this platform thinking. I have it a bit on the right hand side, yeah. what, the one standard platform, right? So, okay, we could do different missions or, or use cases, but let's try and use the same platform instead of having to invent a new platform every time. So starting more from a modular principle, which which is the basis actually of a, of a CubeSat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are, I call them strategic anchors. It's really something we did um, uh, four, five, actually, six, six weeks ago. It's the very beginning when I started. We, we discussed through and say, what, in order for us to be successful, what are the things that we need to do? And this is what we came up with. So we've been working on that for some time. And based on that, to formulate more precisely what are we going to do organizationally and also going forward. What are our priorities? What are the specific actions that we uh, that we step into here? Uh, and there, uh, number one, increase product business. And why do we do that? We do have product business today. We have had uh, two years ago about forty million of our total turnover. You can look up what the total turnover was. Uh, forty million of revenue was product business last year. Sixty million. This year we're hoping to be more. Um, and we have a good margin. That doesn't mean we are not competitive. If, if, our, if our competitors are looking, no, no, that's not how it works. But as such, uh, uh, we have a decent margin on uh, products. And it's a repeatable process. More products means uh, we, we crank up uh, the speed in the production. But we have a very good production. It's a very fine production that we have. We can get a lot more out of it. And we don't have to spend more money on, uh, on building more products. So it's sort of a, a, almost a no-brainer. Yes, we need to increase our product business. Next question, is there enough business? Is it market big enough? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Just look at the US market, which is number three here. We only have 7%. It's the biggest market in the world. Are they going to buy products? Of course they are. Are they flying missions and constellations? Of course they are. Can they all? Everybody has a, a, a space strategy today. Can they all build uh, subsystem products? Do they all have 15 years experience? No, they do not. So therefore, uh, that is where we need to focus and we can get uh, a quite a good volume business out of this and, in, and with a healthy margin. Concretely, concretely uh, we are going to internally focus and strengthen more our product development process so that we ensure that we get high quality continuous product out and we can meet uh, market needs. Uh, we are also hiring at least one, uh, we are gradually building it up, maybe two more product salespeople. This is already started. So we are focusing much more on that to make sure we leverage this uh, part here. And, and could that also happen to partners or is that, do you need to do that sell yourself? 
It could also be via partners. SAIC actually that 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 agreement is that they would be our our so called primer system integrator. So they're probably going to front and hold the contract, and then they buy the products from us for sure. Yeah. Uh, it could also be via other partners in some parts of the world. Uh, uh, local distributors are important for this. There are certain markets. If you want to hit government, I can give an example without uh, predicting anything. Just just a good example. In India, if you want to sell to government, uh, you have to go by a local distributor. It's just how the market works. So so this could be another way of selling. So yes, and then uh, number two, focus on project profitability. Well, it seems obvious. <clears throat> yes, I, I guess it is, but... Um, uh, it hasn't necessarily been a driver because driver has been top line. We are a growth company. We are more focused on keep growing the top line. That's that's the that's the general principle as a growth company. You just if you just grow big enough, eventually the the profitability will sort itself out. I would say I think I think it's a good time now to focus on profitability. Uh, what does it mean? It means we are looking at the existing uh, contract portfolio we have and reviewing it. And then we are proactively, uh, in a very friendly and uh, win-win way, we're discussing with our uh, the current contract holders in the other end, uh, what can we do? Uh, we will more actively manage our uh, our contracts to uh, to to a better level. It also means when we take in new uh, projects or programs and we are uh, when we are bidding, uh, we will be more critical on whether we take too high a risk or whether we can make money. It plays into the repeatability. Let's do something that we have done before. It's less risk, um, and also let's uh, use our core strengths. Uh, uh, let's search for the cases where where we are we are the best, and we have a strong uh, uh, foothold already. So that's part of the profitability idea. So we need to to focus on that and put a priority. So profitability over revenue is the message here. Does that mean you have changed anything internally in your processes around product bidding? Is it moved higher up the, the decision process, or, yes. or do they do you need to make more, uh, you know, worst case calculations, or, or, or if you can describe because it kind of makes sense, but but how do you actually implement that 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 you have well, a, that you have a more certainty <laughs> for for taking less risk and thereby also more certainty on the profitability? Yeah, what well, we 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 are we are reorganizing ourselves towards uh, being more focused, uh, have a more focused team to take on new projects, which means our sales efforts needs to be more integrated with our project management and system engineering efforts. So we have to ensure that actually more of the people that are going to execute a contract or a project with a customer are involved in the early stage of the of the process. It's a classic thing that uh, in, in in many companies, sales is one organization and delivery is another. And then the sales sell something, but deliver can't deliver it. It's we're not we're not the only company in the world doing that. It's quite normal. So it's really about making. We, yes, we are making organization changes to make a much more focused approach. And I I like to talk about that when we go into Q3, um, uh, how we do that. But yes, uh, that that's going to happen. I want to do a footnote here uh, on uh, uh, ESA U European Space Agency project. We would really like to do a lot more of that. Uh, but our, our success rate in terms of uh, making it uh, profitable, uh, at least not uh, unprofitable, hasn't been super good. I think that's been seen also in, in the reporting that has been going on. So it's something we need to correct. Doesn't mean we don't want to do it. Absolutely want to do it because it's really good uh, projects. We just need to be better at managing it and we need to make sure that we have a proper uh, proper bid process and a proper change management process. So uh, if ISA is listening, we, want, we don't want to do more. It's not about that, but right now it's, uh, it's 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 a heavy burden on us and it's a heavy burden on the shareholders which i i don't want to have and i'm trying to uh, to work uh, in, in a positive spirit towards a correction of that mm -hmm. uh, and then the north american market already mentioned that a couple of times uh, yeah it's the biggest uh, is, is it an easy market to enter no of course not uh, uh, north american market is one of the most protective markets actually in the whole world in terms of protecting their own local business uh, but how do you get in there? You do it via partnerships, um, and you need to have an American boots on the ground. So we're going to invest more people into the North American business. We're actually going to define it as we call a business unit, which means uh, whatever money they make, uh, they need to hand a certain amount of money over to the to the company as profits. But the rest they can spend on increasing resources. So we're going to we're going to invest more people into this. 
Yeah, because there was actually a question from the audience. Do you need to build up more presence over there or can you do everything with partnerships? I do you need to put some investment in uh, yeah. in, 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 in in building this market? Yes, we, we do need to uh, we need to put more people uh, in the market. It doesn't have to be a huge organization, but even if you work with partners, there's a time zone difference, there's a culture mm -hmm. difference. So you want to have some skilled people uh, close to the market, uh, even if you work by partners. You call it an investment. Investment sounds like something is something that's costing money for a period of time. I'm not, I'm not actually sure it has to be that because we do have a, a decent uh, cash flow from North America. Uh, and perhaps it's more about saying, well, for that cash, instead of we take that and, and you know, spend it on, on, on losing money on other projects, we should let it stay in North America and let them grow. Uh, I think that's a better strategy. And then deal with, the, deal with the problems that we have in other places directly instead of trying to subsidize it for an otherwise healthy business in North America. Perfect. Okay. I want to say here that this is a transformation. It's in the upper right-hand corner. Um, we're going to go through several steps. We have started uh, our transformation program. Uh, it was about two weeks in, uh, so we have been running for about six weeks. It's a major transformation of the organization. It's not done overnight. It's not one of these, hey, guys, uh, welcome. Uh, we just changed the organization, and now it looks like that. No, no. We have everybody involved. We have a lot of people working, discussing how do we do this. We have defined our overall strategic anchors. We are starting to align ourselves towards how do we address the, the ESA projects? How do we address uh, the, the commercial market? How do we address the product market? So it's a process. Uh, it's also a stepping stone towards uh, the break even on cash flow and free cash flow. And as I said, we understand the stepping stones. Doesn't mean they're given, that means we need to execute on them. But we have a plan that we know if we can do this, this, and this, we're jumping from one ice flake to a bigger ice flake and to what's where we want to be free cash flow positive. And uh, with that, I'll uh, jump to uh, the last slide and take take questions. So just to summarize, we're aligning the organization, our priorities towards free cash flow and profitability. Therefore, with my arguments before, we are changing the market guidance according to that. Uh, so you can read into it what you want to, but it's simply this is what I'm going to be focused on. Therefore, that makes sense for me to report on that. Um, we have also said it's not explicit here. I want to say that uh, uh, if when we focus on that, I might make decisions that are going to impact uh, revenue or, or uh, well, let's say revenue is probably a better measure. Uh, but I want to be able to make those decisions because pre cash flow is what's there, profitability is what's there. So I'm not so interested in revenue right now because it's, it's not really what, uh, what we should be driving for. That does not mean we don't want revenue. We have uh, pipelines. Uh, we have some major programs that we are working on. Uh, the, the pipeline continues. It's not about not wanting to uh, grow, but, it, but it's about not only wanting to grow. It's about wanting to be profitable when we grow. So that's that's the focus here. Uh, we will focus on improving our product, uh, product business uh, short term to improve uh, cash flow and overall profitability. We'll focus on lower risk and better profitability on our customer missions or projects. Uh, we'll focus on developing North America. Uh, and I, I repeat, I strongly believe that we, we, in our ability to, and possibility to grow our top market, possibility, there is a market, possibility, we have uh, the right technology, possibility, we have the right brand, ability, we do have that. But right now, you know, intermediate, we just need to get that cash flow under control. Um, and, and, I, and I don't think that uh, people are too happy to give me more money. So I'm basically taking that as a fact and saying, okay, Let's agree that's how it is. And then we'll focus on cash and profitability. And it's possible to do. Our long-term strategy remains the same, uh, but we are focused on healthy and, and profitable growth. So whatever has been commuted in past strategies, I'm not saying to you that's changing. As you can see, I'm actually not talking a lot about constellations and services and these kind of things. It doesn't mean it's invalid. It just means right now it's about getting the financials under control. Then we'll grow from there. So if I should understand you, you're taking this 24, this short term view before we, we speak about the other, when this is fixed, yes. we can speak about the other stuff. Yes, because I believe that if I can turn this, and I know I can, into free cash plus uh, cash flow positive situation, our financing of, uh, options are, are changing. For sure they are. When we can sustain uh, uh, our own business as such, um, I'm sure we will be able to raise the capital. We need to take the next uh, uh, jump that might we need that might need more cash than we can generate ourselves short term. Perfect. Yeah, but should we jump to the question, Carsten? Yes, please. 
Perfect. Where are your cost saving? Is it R&D, production, sale teams, et cetera? Uh, so how is it kind of divided in this uh, cost savings? Uh, yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. So, so the cost, the, yeah. this is the executed cost savings, right? This is what we have done. Yes, well, it's, yeah, a, it's, a, it's across the board. There, there's an interesting thing is you can't just focus on one area. It sort of goes hand in hand uh, to some extent. But uh, but yes, it would be my answer to that question. Okay, perfect. You don't mm. want to specify that. Uh, so it, it, we don't know whether it's the drug gross margin or the... But in, in the end, it will be the urban mm. margin. I, no, no, but I mean, it's obviously we, we have reduced the engineering team. We have also reduced in the production. Actually, we haven't reduced in, uh, in, uh, in sales. We're going to increase in sales. Maybe I should make that note. Yeah. Uh, if you have made reductions, we're gonna <coughs> we're gonna increase the, the sales team. With your new strategy, can you give some perspectives on the expected order intake? Do you expect twenty three to be close to twenty two mm -hmm. or lower? Yeah, I'm not really. Uh, um, I, I don't really want to comment that on that specifically. I want to guide you towards profitability and cash flow is what I'm focusing on. So uh, I, I certainly want to have a biggest order intake as I can, but I will take it with the principles that I have uh, outlined. I would also say that uh, order intake on a product sale uh, counts almost twice uh, uh, as a project sale, which means I can reach my, the same profitability with half half the revenue on product sales compared to project sales as it is right now, just just as a parameter. So talking about the volume of product sales uh, is, is is what it is. What I'm really interested in getting uh, of uh, volume of order intake, sorry, what I'm really interested in is, is the product sales because that's where I can make money. And there's a question here. We you, we always discuss the potential growth in the, in this industry, and I don't think yeah. uh, you have given up on that growth. But can you give some kind of a time horizon when you can expect to see that uh, growth also on on, on gum space economy? Yeah. I know you said now let's focus here, but can you give some time frame where you expect to to also really uh yeah get the industry growth uh, back in back in your books also yeah i i i, I think i can because i think we already did it uh, and i guess that's my point if you look at this graph here we actually have a 24 percent kcar so the growth has been there uh and that so that's not the that's not the issue and the the the, the market will continue to grow what i'm saying is we got we need to now go to a, a profitable uh, growth healthy growth rather than top line right now but we will get back to that growth. So in principle, we've already done it. And you could, to some extent, argue that perhaps we have done it, uh, you know, at, at, at the expense of making money. Uh, that, that was a strong statement. So, uh, but, but I think you understand it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so so it, it will, it will uh, it, we, we will grow. And I think we've already been growing. And also, uh, it's, you know, fair, fair to be fair. You, you know that there were some projects in the past that didn't go so well. Uh, with an Israeli customer, and there's also been a, a recent Spanish customer. And I know it's sort of the ifs and buts, but if we have managed that contract with the Spanish customer correctly, guess what? We would have been a much higher growth, and of course, actually, very likely on a profitable level by now. So there are a couple of mistakes, you know, just a very, very few mistakes, but with big impact that has happened. And this is what I'm focused on. We learn from what happened. What do we need to do differently? Because the projects are there. And like I said, there are more projects in pipeline. It's not like they're not there. We just need to make sure next time we take it, we're not going to repeat the same story again. And, and a question: I don't want to. Do you have do you have more projects in in your order book uh, that needs to be cleaned up, uh, or do you feel confident that, that 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 that? Of course, you can never eliminate risk, but it's lower risk projects that is in the in, in your order book going from from onwards and here. Yeah, I think I've I've re referred to what I said before that by changing this uh, focus, it also means that we will make some decisions that are favoring cash and profitability over revenue. So uh, could there be more? I would rather say I'm working on actively uh, changing the projects and contracts that we have to the extent it's it's necessary. Yeah. Um, so so are there more skeletons? I saw that <laughs> writing. Uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't comment on that. I, I, I'm more positive towards uh, working on a, on a good solution for everybody. Then there's a question is, should we expect gradual improvement in cash flow to 23 or is that coming in, 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 in 24 as, you know, like a catch up uh, effect? Um, we, so the, got to, the target is second half uh, 2024 for, for a break even. Of course, I'm going to try and optimize it as much as I can. My goal is, though, to not having to take in uh, uh, more capital 
uh, before that. And, and obviously after that, I don't have to unless we, we have a specific investment. Uh, so so uh, it, 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 it's hard for me to say. It depends on a lot of things. There's some bigger, there's some bigger chunks that can, that can be relatively big swingers. If you're successful, it will look nicer. Yeah. How has fluctuation in the Swedish crown impacted the uh, returns, uh, results, sorry, lately? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I used to live in Sweden. I called it the Swedish pesetas because uh, the, the inflation rate was quite high compared to, to the Danish kronas at the time. I, it hasn't really impacted that much, I believe. But I, I say that without actually having looked at it. Uh, yeah. And then the, the final question, uh, I have one more. Uh, do, do you... <sighs> Are you going to buy uh, shares in the company and put your your uh, the hand on the, the cooking plate? I, I don't the know hand on that's the a Danish the uh, expression, plate. and I know you can probably not answer it, but uh, you can give us some. Uh, no, but I can because it, I can say what's public. I have bought shares in the company, uh, and and people can go in and see that. And I, I think I said with a smile last time, I've made an even bigger commitment. I moved to a city in Denmark that I never thought I would be living in, and I've actually bought a house. So I think for for. For the investors, I think that's an even bigger commitment because I'm I'm, I'm totally committed here. Um, yeah. And then the, the last question is: Is it new customers that you need to go and dig up, or, or are you going to uh, increase on existing customer sales? You know, the the first oh, part yeah. is always much harder than to increase the product sales on oh, yeah. existing customers. So uh, a split, so we can get a feel yeah. on how. Not easy is this going to be, but uh, maybe is it uh, how hard is it going to be? It, it would be a, a mix. Let's divide it up into product sales, so the bits and pieces, and then let's say bigger project sales where we're building full satellites. Yeah. We started with full building full satellites. We, we're absolutely working on a we call it a key account concept, and we do have uh, one one major customer that we've been with all along. Unseen Labs is no secret in that. And of course, we're going to favor them. They, they are they are a long term friend and customer, and we will keep working on that. If you look on the product side, we actually have recurring revenue from a number of customers that we will also be, be looking at. It's also some American customers. They are uh, customers in Europe, so we'll be looking at that. In order to implement the uh, the leverage, the the partnership model, etc., uh, we will be looking for new customers as well, either direct customers, but as we also talked about. Uh, perhaps resellers or uh, strategic uh, technical relationships with some bigger, bigger companies. Uh, what big companies are out there? You can think of, I say, Lockheed Martin, Airbus, Thales, etc. They're going now for all the big, big contracts and constellations. They have the power. Uh, we would, of course, be looking at whether we can uh, we can work and, and make agreements with them to to facilitate, especially the product sale. And then a uh, final question just uh, got in. Uh, going to the stock market in, 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 in Denmark, you know, we have seen Assetech move to the Danish stock market instead of being in Norway mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and being a Danish company. So any plans, uh, thinkings at least, I know you can't announce any plans, but any thinkings uh, or discussions, I might say maybe mm -hmm. about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now my focus, my focus is on, on creating a healthy business. And I said, whatever, Wherever you might think about moving, is it better or, or not? I, I don't really have any opinions on that, but I do have an opinion on this, that you need to perform well as a company and then you'll do well on any stock exchange. So it's not really about the, the, the stock exchange. Uh, so yeah, I, and I, 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 don't, I don't like commenting on share price and, and stock exchanges. Okay. It's not my business. My business is to, to run the company. That's, that's a key thing here. We have to ask, or else we don't ever get. No, an no, you can ask all your answers. I will not answer. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you will. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but no, it would be wrong for me to uh, to speculate in anything like that. And I and I hope also to to the shareholders watching, uh, you appreciate that I'm focused on making this into a, a viable growing concern. That is the objective. Wherever we are listed, we can always change it. If you ask me, I'd rather go to New York. That'd be fun. Uh, I think there's much more uh, risk. Uh, there, there's there's ten times more investment into space in the U.S. than in any other place. So if you want to go anywhere, then never mind about Denmark. <laughs> That's not super exciting. <laughs> it's actually, you don't want to be at. So that was my personal statement. It's not a statement from the company. No, I understand. You know, let let's be that the uh, final words for for today. Thank you, Carsten, for taking us through, and thank you for the audience uh, listening in. And may everybody have a nice, a little bit prolonged weekend. Thank you, Michael.